how many calories can I burn in one hour of carding? Well, today we're going to find out using an ECG based heart rate monitor. We've all heard the stories of how intense driving an F1 car can be with F1 drivers losing up to six pounds in a race. Now, I don't expect that to happen to me today in a Rotax rental cart, but regardless, all of us drivers use carding as a way to stay fit in the off season. So why not quantify how effective it really is from a cardio perspective? So in my last video, I tested how many calories I could burn in an hour of sim racing and I burned 640 calories in about 80 minutes total, which shocked me to say the least. It did, however, bring up some questions to the relevancy and accuracy of the test. So we'll be answering those questions later in the video, but for now, let's hop into the cart. So just walking around, getting ready to hop into the cart, I'm around 120 or 130 beats per minute. We sat in the cart for a couple of minutes, so it dropped down to 100 just before we fired the engines. Okay, so cold tires, extremely cold conditions being U the UK in January. As you can see, this guy's already sliding. So let's take our time here. You need to actually push here, so yeah, let's avoid these guys. We're gonna have some quick people on the track today, so gotta be careful. Oh, hello. God, I chose the wrong day to wear a dark visor. I thought, you know, because we're close to sunset, you know, maybe we would have sun in my eyes, but I forgot I'm in the UK, so that's completely pointless. Best way to build temp is just going to be to push at this point, because this, this tire compounds so hard anyway, I'm not going to overheat them. So we only have 10 minutes to qualify here. There was no practice before this, so my heart rate starts increasing quite quickly once I hit a bit of traffic. Debating whether or not I back off now, or just get through this path, because if I don't get a lot of time in, I'm going to be starting at the back. You can tell by my heart rate that I have max focus on right now, because I know I need just one lap of clean traffic, and I should be able to put it in a decent time. Got to be careful with these people even... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Huh, well, that's the first accident of the day. Fingers crossed there aren't any more. Okay, we're gonna have clear track to maybe get a good time in now, so need to maximize it while we got the chance. 12 seconds later. Oh, we're already gonna catch traffic. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> These people are crazy. I'm really running out of chances here to get a quali lap in, so the heart rate has reached a new peak. Oh, very oversteery through that. That's what we want. Should correct itself with more temperature in the race. This lap was looking pretty decent, but unfortunately I ran into some more lap traffic right at the end in sector three, so this lap isn't gonna cut it. So then in the start of this lap, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be my last viable attempt, my heart rate dips, and I think that's because in my head I know I can't do a fast lap having to overtake both of these guys. But I get around this guy quite easily, and then this one looks pretty fast, so maybe I actually have a chance to still put in a decent time. I did manage to get alongside him, and unfortunately he's impeded just a little bit of progress in Sector 3, but we still might have an opportunity to put in a decent time here. So coming across the line, it's a 47.2, so that should be half decent for us. I thought I could get one more, but then this yellow comes out and something really strange happens. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell was that? I literally am so confused it was a yellow. Why the hell was I getting pushed? Oh, that was weird. In my gut, I knew I didn't have the time nor the temperature to do a flying lap again, but I decided to do it anyway. Oh, careers are cold again. Woo! So that scrappy lap ended up putting me P3 to start this 40 minute race. This is what I love about rental car racing in the UK. It's like, I can just show up on a random Saturday. Even though the session was messy, like there's gonna be people who are quicker than me. So, or as quick at least. So it should be some fun, some really good fun. So during quali, we peaked at 195 beats per minute with an average of 171, but we'll get into how many calories I burned later in the video. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of heat through the gloves, but not much. It's still ice cold. So once everyone was in position, it was time to start the race. Nice is down, here we go. Uh, these tires are gonna be gold, bone cold after waiting for that long. It's been about, I don't know, seven minutes. 
I mean, there's no point in even weaving right now because like you're just not going to generate temperature, but I can get some brake temp in. So as we round the final corner to start the race, you can see my heart rate is already at about 155, but look how quickly it ramps as the green flag drops. So for whatever reason, the left side of this track is super bumpy. So if you're starting on the inside, you already have a huge advantage here. Cold tires, come on. The balance at the moment on cold tires is understeer followed by a little bit of snap oversteer, so we need to get some temp in. Just like we predicted, we're up into P2. But as you can probably tell, we're just entering sector 3 and you can already see a gap forming between us and the leader. This guy's quick. Even with a full lap driven in anger, we're still not up to temp. Oh, big oversteer. And it turns out I wasn't the only one dealing with those temperature issues either. Bye, have a great time. Oh, this guy's quick, it's gonna be hard to catch him. Gonna have to hope for a mistake here, I think. Black traffic already causing him some trouble. We're not even four laps in, and I'm already catching lap traffic, and these guys are particularly difficult to predict. Oh, Jesus Christ. Some people are so blind, oh my god. He's very aggressive on uh, turn in. I'm gonna try and replicate it, but. Not an easy technique to master. I wouldn't say my heart rate's exactly low at this point, but as soon as the leader started taking me to Gapplebee's, my heart rate was definitely subsiding until... Oh god. God, what is wrong with these people? Alright, still 34 minutes remaining. A lot can happen in that amount of time. Now, even though it's early in the race, this is that kind of period where you're trying to manage tires, you're trying to manage temperatures, and you're just trying to get into a good rhythm to be consistent. And you can see my heart rate really reflects that. I was basically dead even for several laps. After seeing the leader do it successfully, I tried to work on my entry approaches here, being a little bit more aggressive on that initial turn-in, but then smooth mid to exit. And I was certainly getting better at that, but I was also pushing the brakes a bit too hard. Before long, the peace and quiet died, and it was time to deal with lap traffic again. Ah, a bad time to catch a slow guy for sure. And it wasn't me who was having to deal with weird traffic situations either. I mean, look at the way that they're defending here, and they're being lapped twice. God damn, look at these guys. What is that line? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we just caught this guy massively. And that's all it took, a little bit of traffic, and we were back in the hunt for the lead. Now keep an eye on my heart rate here because this race is about to heat up. Here we go. Knowing the leader still has more pace than me, I have to stay absolutely glued to his bumper through this traffic, otherwise I risk him gapping me again. The pressure is definitely on because I'm now approaching a new max heart rate. All I need is one mistake and some good exits here, and we should have an opportunity to overtake. Nice defense. Oh, blocked up the roof big time there. <laughs> now, generally speaking here, I can tell he is prioritizing entry speed and I'm prioritizing exits to the point where I'm actually sometimes getting worse exits because I dropped the RPM too low. Now it actually looks like we have pretty similarly matched engines here because even with a little bit of slipstream, I'm just barely catching him on this main straight. So that's what you like to see. All right, he's under some pressure. We just can't let him get away. Force him into a mistake. Now looking back at the HR data, this is an interesting dip here. You can see how quickly my heart rate just drops as I'm going down the straight. And I think that's because cognitively I know that I'm not going to be able to overtake from this distance. He was pretty strong on the brake, so it would have been a risky move to lunge it there on the inside in that case. But I am getting quite annoyed at this lap traffic who definitely knows I'm a faster cart, but for some reason wouldn't let me around. I'm also now tucking my head in to try and reduce the drag on the straights, trying to eke out every bit of lap time I can. Oh, we just lost a lot of time there. The visor is fogging up big time now. And I'm not the only one starting to have issues as well, as P1 makes their first noticeable mistake. And now all of a sudden, I am catching him massively in Sector 3. Is he getting tired? Is the tire temperature ruining the balance of his cart? I don't know, but I need to push as hard as possible now. Oh, a lot of traffic here. What the 
So I'm totally aware that this is rental carding and these guys don't have mirrors so they probably don't see me coming or know who's behind them. But you're going to see some examples of some guys definitely catching on and actually being respectful and letting us around. So is this just something that you're supposed to expect and anticipate for rental carding or should you expect more? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Hi. That could have been worse. This was quickly becoming a race of who could manage the traffic better, and this was the opportunity I needed. Oh yeah, here we go. Now that we're in P1, have a look at how he's approaching the corner entries. So much more aggressive than I am, but he's definitely slower on exits. And it's as if the racing gods were looking down upon us as soon as we entered the lead, because now we have lap traffic actually letting us around. Oh, thank you, finally! And you may have noticed, shortly after taking the lead, we reached a new max heart rate. And the pressure was certainly on, because now as the lead cart, I'm the one who has to manage the lap traffic. I really didn't maximize the restart out of the yellows here. I was expecting this cart ahead of us to be faster than they really were, so now I'm on the backflip for sure. I know if I stay behind this cart any longer, I'm screwed, so I'm just gonna have to lunge it at this point. And now the guy in P2 is using some scare tactics here by just bumping me right in corner entries just to try and throw me off guard and hopefully make a mistake. I didn't notice this at the time, but look how much he's catching me in this next corner here where it's supposed to be easy flat, but he just takes a much tighter line and that somehow is reducing the distance and putting him right on my gearbox. And that's exactly the place we do not want him to be. Oh, okay. He wants to play with some bumpage? Okay. So we've lost the race lead, and immediately you can see the heart rate is starting to subside. The pressure's off because now I know he is the one who's going to have to do the real work here. But unfortunately for me, there was a new variable coming into play. God, I got some serious fogging on my visor. I can't see anything. One hand on the wheel, one hand on my visor. <laughs> There are still a lot of laps left in this race, so I don't want to do anything hasty by overtaking him just to be overtaken again right at the end. So it's time to play a little bit of strategy. What I'm doing now is setting patterns, basically doing the exact same thing, so he's going to keep defending the same way, then I'll throw him off guard at some point. I think without saying anything, we both kind of communicated to each other that we wanted to just work together to get through this pack, and we weren't really fighting too much. Even when there might have been an opportunity, I decided to wait and hope that maybe later in the race he would struggle more than he is now. But sometimes it's best to just take the opportunity when you have it. Come on, dude! Alright, I'm gonna make an observation here. Every time I go rental karting and I see someone wearing dunk lows, they're always a complete hazard on track. Yeah, nothing against dunk lows or anything, but this has happened too many times for it to be a coincidence. Come on, this is ridiculous. Ah, where are the blue flags when you need them? Come on, blue flags. I lost a lot of ground there, and at this point I'm having to open my visor on every single straight just to have any sort of inkling of visibility. The gap to the leader, though, has given me an opportunity to focus on consistency, and the heart rate is reflecting that. You certainly picked up the pace, though. We're catching. And while I was getting consistent, the cart behavior was definitely changing. The cart seems like it's bogging down a bit more now. Now that we're uh, picking up rear grip, we be able to play greater now with all that extra rear tire temp. The balance was something I could learn to drive, but now we're running into the faster group of lap traffic, so they'll be infinitely harder to overtake. It's really tough to get around the faster lap traffic. I found it was usually just easier to surprise them, and hopefully they didn't know you were even coming, but when they do realize, they often think that you're actually fighting for position, so they more or less defend. Or should I say, give up less easily. But then when you come across a gaggle of lap traffic, things start getting interesting real fast. Perfect. You can't park this, huh? And fortunately for me, these guys decided to let me around at a crucial moment in the race so that I still had a chance to hunt down P1. This is gonna be so feasible. I just need a bit of luck and some good pace. Still win this race, nine minutes to go. <laughs> I, hear, I hear a rustling sound that's not good. 
something doesn't sound right. Just gotta keep pushing and hope nothing falls apart. I was pushing really hard. I mean, even pulling in lap times a second faster than qualifying, even with traffic. So it was time to put the hammer down. I was really struggling to get around this guy in the black suit, and my heart rate is increasing with the frustration. What I eventually realized was the guy in the black suit and the guy in the red cart ahead of the race leader are both fighting for position, so we're basically sandwiched in a completely different battle. And that means they don't have the luxury of letting us around easily. My heart rate is back over 200, as I know the race is coming to a close, and I need to get something done fast. Oh, come on! Jesus! Come on. The odds are not in my favor now, with only a few minutes to go, and we keep catching yellow after yellow in Sector 3, so this is going to make it super difficult to get around these guys. And on top of that, they're now battling with each other as well. But eventually we did. I, it's like properly dark now, so I actually can't see anything. But at least we're on that guy. I don't think we have enough time to do anything. One minute. I never say never. Never. Oh, we did absolutely everything we could. He's right up ahead of us. Really two cards ahead. Oh, that was a good race. That was a really good race. So how many calories did I burn? Okay, so I only have one number here, and that's the total amount of calories I burned while wearing the heart rate monitor. So that, of course, is going to include qualifying as well as the race. But it also includes the 20 minutes before I got in the car and the 20 minutes after. So with that in mind, what was the total number of calories we burned? So drum roll, please. That is an insane amount of calories burned in an hour. My God. Based off this test, if carding isn't the best form of cardio, I don't know what is. But in all honesty, I think there's more to the story here. So I found the white paper that was actually written by the manufacturer of this heart rate monitor. And in this document, they compare the H10 against some of its rivals, as well as clinical grade stationary heart rate monitors. They put it through its paces in a variety of different physical exercises, but none of them obviously being racing. But the conclusion was pretty interesting. Essentially, the heart rate monitor I'm using right now was actually even better than the clinical grade monitors. So it seems pretty likely that the heart rate itself is actually quite accurate. But what about the actual calorie measurement from that heart rate reading? So according to this article, your heart rate indicates how much effort it takes for you to do a certain activity, and that effort determines the calories you burn. So if a heart rate monitor indicates your calorie burn, it's more likely to be accurate than the average activity tracker because it's taken your specific heart rate into account. Now that does sound positive, but then I read this article which references a study which starts off with, there's always a catch. Even good accuracy from a heart rate monitor doesn't always correlate to accurate calorie burn estimates. While none of the devices were from the Polar brand, even when heart rate accuracy was good, the accuracy of measuring energy expenditure or calories burned was not. And here's the real kicker, the most accurate device was off by 27% and the least accurate was off by a staggering 93%. So that's a pretty wide margin of error. So I think the conclusion is we don't really know, but certainly let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you found this interesting, be sure to subscribe because we'll be doing lots more stuff like this in the future. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna wanna watch this one as well. So with that all being said, see you guys in the next one.